So Flora, we've touched on wealth creation. Um, you talked about 27% growth in the number of ultra high net worths. I think that's another 115,000 odd ultra high net worths globally. A lot of that capital will flow overseas. Um, in terms of cross-border investments, we're expecting a lot of it to come to London. Now, I think in the wealth report, you touched on London being a global super city, a, a top two city. What, what do you mean by that? Can you give us some perspective? Well, in our annual City Wealth Index, we look at where ultra high net worths live, spend time and invest. And this year, in the unprecedented fashion which has dictated 2020, we had a tie at the top. London and New York were inseparable. On one side, New York does have more ultra high net worths than London with over 7,000 and London has 6,600. 6, but London also has more millionaires than New York, more than 874,000 of them. On the investment side, New York has more global firms headquartered there and strong appetite from domestic investors in their commercial real estate. Whereas London has that, as you said, that strong cross-border appeal and is really appeals to a global audience and a global level of private investors. Despite Brexit, despite the pandemic, the political uncertainty that we've seen over the last few years, London continues to dominate and has that underlying fundamental appeal. I think it's important that firms, businesses, individuals are all committing to London in that longer term. The beginning of 2021, we've seen a record quarter for IPOs in the city of London. More than £13 billion has been raised, which is more than double the previous record set in 2006. And I think what's more important is that technology has really been highlighted in the last year as a growing sector, and it's going to pave the way for much more. And London is the European tech hub. Across 2020, European tech firms raised a record amount in venture capital, and London was responsible for a quarter of Europe's total, which is more than three times its nearest rival. So it just shows the dominance and the underlying fundamental draw that, there, what, that is there in London. So is London home to some of the top tech firms? I think it's clear that London has a huge tech presence. We've got Apple, we've got Spotify, we've got Facebook, we've got Google. All of them seem to still have a presence in London and some are actually expanding their footprint in the city. So it's just showing that they really believe in the future of London as that tech and hub of innovation. So you've positioned London as a top two city. I, I buy into that completely. Uh, in terms of the levels of demand, how do you qualify them? How do you assess how much capital is actually trying to deploy into either residential or commercial markets in London? I think it's clear to see that there's a huge amount of demand. Um, the Knight Frank Capital Tracker at the beginning of 2021 saw 46 billion looking to target commercial real estate in London. Yes, this is 5% lower than it was in 2020, but with the double digit falls in investment volumes last year, the impact will be negligible. And actually it's far above, I think about 15% above the 2019 value. Then on the residential side, you've got this clear pent up demand from overseas buyers, which is clear in the higher end of the market. But if we look back at what's happened in the last month, March 2021, a 10 year high for offers accepted, offers made, exchanges and number of new applicants in the London market. So there's a huge amount of demand and a huge amount of capital looking to come into the city. But what are the fundamental appeals? What do you hear from your clients? Why are they buying in London? It's a really good question. It's, it's very easy for us to talk about London being a kind of top two global city, but fundamentally it comes down to what our clients and what our investors think. Mm -hmm. And we talk to a lot of clients about commercial requirements, about what they're looking to do, where they're looking to invest and deploy capital in London mm -hmm. and residential. I think from a residential perspective, it starts with home and the family and reasons that we all love London, which is lifestyle and education and culture and quality of stock. And that stock point is really important. If you're a young family, the variety of houses and apartments on offer in London, if you're a family in Chelsea or Notting Hill or Kensington, is almost second to none on a kind of global scale. And in every borough, there is great private schools. There are great private schools. There's great access to parks, etc. So the lifestyle perspective, the fact that um, English is spoken in London, our legal system, our very transparent financial and property markets, I think really make London appeal. Moving on to the business side, London's a great place to a great place to do business. We're a financial business hub on the global arena. We sit in a time zone, obviously, between the US, Europe and Asia. Um, we have access to a lot of expertise in the financial world, the legal world, real estate, consultancy and, and accounting. And I think that, that counts for a lot. So we see London appealing um, both from a personal and an investment perspective to so many of our clients, particularly because the quality of commercial stock is also there. We have some incredible office stock incredible retail, um, it's incredible out-of-town distribution and, and retail warehousing offering as well. 
And do you see that transition between the clients having a home there and then looking to invest commercially? Very much so. Um, a lot of our clients will start their journey to London. They may come over from New York or from Europe or from Asia, um, buy a home, which could be between one and 100 million, depending on you know, what they want to, to do, and then set up a family office, so a private equity firm, a hedge fund, whatever, whatever they're into. And, and it's very easy to do. So the transition tends to start with family and home and lifestyle and then move pretty quickly into, into the business arena.